Good morning, Britain. This morning we are paying tribute to a national hero. Captain Sir Tom inspired us all, and this morning our show is dedicated to him. He put the greats into Great Britain. Today we remember the courage and determination of a man who captured the hearts of young and old. From modest beginnings, the war veteran who became a symbol of hope, a shining light in the darkest of times. This morning we celebrate this remarkable man's remarkable life. And it's our honour to be able to do so, isn't it, Captain Sir Tom? Very Moore. sad uh, day today to lose a man of that stature, a man that, incredibly, nine months ago, we'd never heard of. No. Nope. Uh, it was the middle of April when uh, one of the regional ITV channels did a little piece... ITV uh, Anglia. ITV Anglia, a little piece on Captain Tom Moore, who was uh, walking up and down his garden to try and raise uh, originally £100. His family had bet him a pound per lap and then they upgraded it in a press release to the local press to try and get some attention so they could raise some money for charity to a thousand, to a thousand thinking that would be ridiculous <laughs> uh, and he ended up raising 33 million pounds and if you would, add you, gift aid you add gift aid 39 million pounds and that made him the greatest individual fundraiser in the history of this country mm. uh, a quite outstanding achievement by an outstanding man and the more we got to know him of course he appeared many times on this program we interviewed him many times, and uh, the more we got to know him, the more we all loved him, didn't we? Because he represented the very best of his country. Yeah. The decency, the courage, the determination, the resilience. A man who'd come through World War II serving his country, risked his death numerous times, uh, and that instilled in him this, this sort of force for positivity, which is even in the darkest times, like World War II, tomorrow will be a good day. Yeah. Um, and uh... It felt like in that moment of our deepest, darkest despair mm. when we were all wondering how lockdown was mm. going to, how long it was going to last and whether we could do anything, there was that sense of helplessness and gloom. And then this man, who'd already fought a courageous battle, um, he did a very simple thing, but that simple thing was so powerful and it gave people a sense of purpose and a sense of hope and it was a moment of joy in the darkness. So we can now have a look back at what Captain Sir Tom Moore achieved. When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm, there's a golden sky and soon to the song of the lark. You've got to look forward to the fact that things will improve, as they always do. Things will get better and we will have a, a lovely golden sky. We'll meet again. I've always said tomorrow is a good day. All my life I've been an optimistic person to think that if you had a bad day or two, things will certainly get better. And in my life, they always have. You know, the amazing thing, um, just seeing Hannah there, his daughter, and she rang me uh, before they put the statement out. It was a very, as you can imagine, a very emotional conversation. And, of course, we know him as Captain Sir Tom Moore, a guy who, in that nine months, raised that money. He got knighted. He was a Pride of Britain award winner. He was a GQ <laughs> Man of the Year and cover star. He had a number one single. Uh, he had a number one hit single. He was Pride of Britain. You know, all these things um, achieved in just a few months, of the last months of his life. Mm. But, of course, as she said, you know, he lived with her and her family for 14 years and she then had to go home and he wasn't there. And, of course, to them, it was Dad and... and granddad. Granddad. Mm. And um, that's, I think, what we need to remember today is that there's a... There's a real man there with a real family, and to us he was Superman. <laughs> um, but they've lost, they've lost this great figure in their lives, and my deepest condolences to all the, all the family. That must have been the hardest journey, actually, mustn't it, to go home into the emptiness of yeah, the house? Yeah, um, I mean, there's no, him, there's no presence. doubt. I mean, talking to Hannah, they, they just feel so gratified about the impact he was able to have on the world. This guy they knew to be a special guy mm. touched everybody, didn't he? Uh, you talked to Captain Tom about who 
you asked him who is the greatest prime minister because, of course, he's, his life spanned so well, to many. Be, and to be fair to Boris Johnson, he, he made regular contact with Captain Tom. He used to ring him up, and I think that meant a lot to Captain Tom, yeah. that the prime minister of his country... He was, you know, this was a guy who... His country came first. And I think having the prime minister, whoever it was, actually bothered to call him. And I know that uh, Boris called the family yesterday. And I thought he made a very nice statement, actually, yeah. Boris Johnson, a very uh, sincere one to somebody I think he, you know, he uh, had the same feelings we all had to him, that he was just a great inspiration. By... Let's take a look at what Boris Johnson had to say. Captain Sir Tom Moore was a hero in the truest sense of the word. In the dark days of the Second World War, he fought for freedom and in the face of this country's deepest post-war crisis, he united us all. He cheered us all up and he embodied the triumph of the human spirit. It's quite astonishing that at the age of 100, he raised more than £32 million for the NHS on his own and so gave countless others their own chance to thank the extraordinary men and women who have protected us throughout this pandemic. He became not just a national inspiration, but a beacon of hope for the world. Our thoughts today are with his daughter Hannah and all his family, and his legacy will long live after him. Very nice tribute there from the Prime Minister, I think encapsulating the mood of the country. Mm -hmm. There's some, so many uh, messages coming in from our viewers who, of course, followed Tom's campaign uh, to raise all this money. And um, contributed to it in, yeah. in droves, um, £39 many of, them, million. many of them obviously very upset, many paying tribute. Just one that caught my eye here, which I really liked, uh, Amanda on email. We watch your show on BritBox from America every hmm. day. Today our family is saddened to hear of Captain Tom's passing. In honour of his memory, we're flying our British flag at half-staff at our home oh. in Texas. Captain Sir Tom inspired us throughout the pandemic and showed us what the best of humanity can do. His selflessness and fighting spirit was apparent in every interview. We will all be remembering him for his service to Queen and country. We appreciate all the times that GMB brought him into our living room so that we could show our children an example of the difference that one person can make when they have a passion and never give up. And isn't that so profoundly true? Mm -hmm. That he, never mind the money that he raised, which was obviously stratospheric, and record-breaking. Think about all the other people who felt inspired by him to go and do their own yeah. fundraising for other charities, for their own causes. Yeah. Like Hundreds, Tony thousands Huddle, of people. Who raised all money over, yeah. for the Evelina. Yeah. I mean, so many children were inspired, young people were inspired, so many uh, NHS staff uh, were encouraged by what, mm. um, by what Captain Sir Tom Moore did. And remember the pain, the pain he was in. You know, I remember talking to him about this um, before we did Live Stories, that he was in real pain doing that walk. He'd had a very bad fall. The reason that he wanted to, uh, really, as he put it, repay the NHS for saving his life was when he had this terrible fall. In uh, the kitchen, wasn't it? Yeah, well, he talked about this. We've got, a, we've got a clip of him talking about it. You nearly didn't reach 100. Uh, you had this terrible fall mm. and you were taken to hospital and you were so bad that you yourself requested a DNR notice to be put on your notes, yes, right. meaning do not resuscitate. Right. What made you do that? Well, I've always felt that if you'd gone, you've gone. I didn't want to finish up in an old people's home without any facility of my own, having to be fed in every way. I would hate ever to be like that. The, the fall that you had, it was a serious fall. Do you remember it? Yes. And uh, if you look at the dishwasher, you can see a dent in the lid when really? the head hit it. And it was rather painful. But in the end, I see I'm still here. What did you feel about the attention and care that you were receiving from the nurses and the doctors? They were perfection. So, really, I had every reason to to thank them for what they'd done for me. And that was the motivation for him. Um, but it meant that when he, when he did the walk, he'd also had uh, cancer, prostate cancer in the last few years. He didn't want to have invasive surgery, so he was living with the effects of that. So this was a guy really racked with a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. And every step of that walk hurt him. Um, so 100 laps of a garden, you might think, oh, anyone could do that. 
Well, you try doing it when you're 99 years old and you've been through what he'd been through in the previous two to three years. And just look at him there. You know, he's just pushing on. But every time he said that he dropped his feet, it would hurt. Mm -hmm. It'd be painful. So that was a real struggle just for him personally on a little level. He never imagined the whole world would be watching him walking. Um, but that, that was indicative of the man that he was, a man who was prepared to overcome pain to help others, to help the NHS, who'd helped him, of course, and it gave him, in his darkest hour. It gave him such joy, didn't it, to know how many people he had inspired. That money that he raised goes towards looking after NHS staff. Um, to provide them with snacks and well-being spaces and, and just time out and, and sustenance and uh, crucially, while they do their iPads. work. And crucially, iPads. But that's the point, is that the, the FaceTime ability when you are um, in a hospital bed and you cannot have people in to visit, iPads and electronic devices w are absolutely crucial. And we know that Captain Sir Tom, at the end, had Hannah at his bedside and his grandchildren. Mm. And his other daughter, Lucy, was, um, he was able to see via a screen. So we know how important those devices are right now when you can't visit, not everybody can be at a bedside. Um, his book, of course, is Tomorrow Will Be a Good Day. And I think a lot of people yesterday felt that they would struggle to be able to say tomorrow will be a good day with the loss of Captain Sir Tom. But he, in his own words, said, I've never been afraid of talking about dying. It comes to all, all of us. I have often thought that when I die, I shall once more see all the people I've loved who have gone ahead. So even if tomorrow is my last day, if all those I loved are waiting for me, then that tomorrow will be a good day too.